Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this lovely bear picture. This is from Miniature Enchanted Forest. And I've never coloured a bear before, so it's going to be quite a challenge for me. I've decided to use my Polychromos pencils for this. Um, it's because um, I just think I've got a better range of browns and things for this bear. Now with the Miniature Enchanted Forest, it has this flap with a line on the back cover, so I'd advise you to open that up before colouring. What I've also done is I've got a sketchbook underneath and I put the book up against it so that I can get a nice surface for colouring on. Let me pop him back into the centre of the shot. It's just a few little tips there and you have, you'll have to hold the flap down with something. I'm using um, my camera remote control quite handy and it's holding the page down. Now I'm going to start with all the little details first and then do the brown after. Um, that might not be a natural way around for you but for me that just feels like the right idea. I'm going to start with these two flowers here and I've picked this orange glaze. I'm not sure why, I just feel they look like um, the oxide daisies which I coloured um, for um, another video. May, may be quite one that you've seen quite recently and what I'm doing is I'm putting more colour at the near the um, tips and the tops of the petals so I'm pressing quite hard and then I'm going to gently just bring it into the centre and leave the tiniest little bit of white there. I'm not going to do lots of different shades. When I coloured an Oxide Daisy that was much bigger, I used four different colours. But for this one I'm just using the orange because it's a small space. And the same with the um, top part, these bits. I'm going to use the Burnt Umber and I'm just going to fade it so I'm going to do it harder pressure there and just fade it up towards the top. There we go. It's a quite small. It might be tricky for you to see. Now we've got all this foliage and I'm going to grab... I'm wondering... I was thinking about doing all the foliage the same but there's so much of it we need to use lots of different colours. So this is earth green yellowish. I'm just going to sharpen it. There we go. And for this, I'm going to do a similar technique. So I'm going to do more layers of colour here at the bottom and then fade it up towards the tips of the flower, of the leaves. I feel it just adds a little interest. And I'm going to do this whole little clump in the same colour because they look like they're growing from the same sort of plant, I think. It's also much quicker and easier to not have to keep changing colour all the time. And if you've got all the time in the world, great. But uh, I'm assuming that most people don't. So uh, it can be uh, nice to get a little section done. There we go. Now I notice we've got these trees here and here like pine trees. So I'm actually going to use my pine green, which is a nice dark green, and colour those. I'm just checking it's all in shot. Now, I'm going to do a similar technique to, um, to what I did with those leaves, where I'm going in darker at the bottom, then lightening it up towards the top. I think I'm going to use a similar technique for a lot of this, um, these uh, shapes. Now I've gone over the edge there, but of course we've got the bear to do in brown, so that will be covered over. And you could do the trees different colours, so they stand out more. There's a juniper green in the polychromos, which I always think looks quite nice with pine trees as well. But I am just going to stick to the same one, because I have over there, if I don't here, I think it will look a little old. And I was a bit late thinking about that idea, wasn't I? So uh, just fade it up to there. There we go. And we need to do their little trunks. Oh, I nearly put that one away. I'm going back to my burnt umber that I've got out already. 
That's partly to save me having to pick one. I'm just thinking this bear's going to be brown. I'm doing the brown might get lost. But never mind. We'll try to avoid doing any more brown, I think. Uh, we've got some twigs here as well. Maybe we'll keep those in a green colour. We've got a bit of grass. I'm trying to see if there's any more grass, but no, we've just got this little bit. And we do have a grass green in the polychromos. And I always think it's really too light. It's this really light green. For me, grass isn't that colour. For me, I prefer to do my grass in this permanent green olive colour. And I need to sharpen this because they are quite small. I'm using my um, Stedler Norris Club sharpener today <laughs> just because all my other ones are, are blunt apart from my rotary sharpener. Now these are small bits. I've already gone out the line once so I'm going to do them all the same shade and the same hardness. Ideally I would do it a little bit darker nearer the bottom but uh, it just I haven't got the steady hand today or not ever normally. These leaves here hmm what should I do? I think I'm going to grab this one. This is the um, chromium green opaque again it needs a sharpen. And what I'm going to do for these it's a really bad idea sharpening on top of your picture it bits go everywhere is do it a bit darker here and reduce towards the tip. You could do it the other way round but I'm thinking because we've got the overhang of his body here it might make these bits darker from a shadow so uh, that's why I'm doing it like that I rather like this shade of green there are some greens I prefer a lot I actually had vowed that I wasn't going to do any more green today because I've just completed a page and I it was nearly all green um, and so I, but they were I used the sort of the emerald green and uh, so it wasn't these shades of green there we go. Right. Now I'm always, we've got this bit with the branches and then we've got this bit. I think I'm going to do all the same green and because it's got branches, it's slightly browny green, I'm going to use the olive green yellowish. To me that's the near, it looks a bit browny. So again the same technique with a harder pressure here and a lighter one towards the tip of the leaf. Now on the facing page to this bear in this book, I don't know if you've got the book yet, um, there's, or if you're even getting it, there's a plain bear that's interesting. So it's got no um, leaves and pictures on it. So uh, that would be an interesting challenge. You just do it just like a plain bear. Or do you draw something on it? Or do you go for something different? I know um, I heard someone saying, I saw someone saying, sorry, in a colouring group, that they wanted to do them as polar bears. So that was interesting. I'm going to do this guy as a brown bear just because if I did him as a polar bear, I think he would need a background. I'm not very good at colouring white things. I mean, obviously, he wouldn't be just white. You'd have to mix up the colours, but just not. It's not my thing. Need to get more practice in. Maybe at Christmas time when it comes round again. Barely seems five minutes since Christmas though, to me. I think because the days all seem the same. Because everyone's, well, actually, your husband isn't home. To be fair, he's he's uh, going into work. He's a key worker. And uh, well, I don't. He's not a frontline worker, thank. Fortunately, but uh, he does a little bit of time at home. But uh, with the children home from school, which is, you know, we've had half term, and even that didn't feel much different because they were still sitting in front of their computers all day long anyway. I'm getting a bit nervous colouring these, looking at the body of the bear, and wondering what on earth I'm going to do. But anyway, I'm sure you'll forgive me if it all goes horribly wrong. This one, I'm going to go in. Oh no, I won't very decisive and then completely changed my mind. I'm going to use this one. Look at that. He's quite small. This is my juniper green. Um, I'm going to do these. I'm not going to shade them because this is too little. I think 
it's had its last sharpen this little one he's uh, gonna have to be retired very soon I think but I have got a replacement for him this big brother is here to help I can't believe how I'm managing to stay in the lines with such a stubby pencil I know some people think it looks really painful but I find it okay I'm used to it I guess um, oh we've got some grass here oh I think that's the leaves of the bluebells or whatever they are these two I think we need something brighter so I'm going to go for the permanent green and I'm going to sharpen it and I think we could do a little bit of um, variation in colour on this my sharpener's playing it there we go <laughs> no it's me it's not the sharpener so I'm going to do it darker here light it up just like I did for some of the others so lovely having a completely new picture to colour because uh, although the other adorable pictures in this book are so lovely we've coloured them before you know in the main version of the book in fact I finished one copy of Enchanted Forest and I'm working through a second so that's some of them I've coloured twice and then through postcards actually I haven't got postcards I've got note cards for Enchanted Forest and for the calendars um, I had a couple of the daily colouring calendars I've coloured quite a few of the different pictures so having something different is nice so that's that one now these I'm going to do next they really are just saying to me bluebells if I don't have a nice bluebell colour I never think I'm just going to do them this colour this bluish turquoise I rather like it again I'm going to have to sharpen because it's a little I'm really sorry if you find the noise of the sharpener disturbing I'm going to I always start darker on the top and then go down lighter with these I admire these so much how Johanna draws them in How to Draw Inky Wonderlands I had a go at drawing these so I don't know if you had a go as well and these little bits that turn up on the ends mine always ended up looking like weird toes I don't know why I could just not get it right I could manage to draw um, mushrooms and fish and um, little tiny daisies but these just I don't know I'm going to do this bit as well I just couldn't get it right just give myself a giggle thinking why have I done these weird toe things I don't, I don't know what I was doing wrong I'm going to do a bright colour for these so I'm going to grab that grass green that I showed you earlier give it a sharpen now we've got very fine um, lines here for the stalk so I'm just going to push down and get some colour I'm not going to worry about shading and the same with the sort of grassy bits which I think are the leaves of this um, plant I hope you can see okay it's quite a fine detailed picture but I can't zoom in any more really it goes blurred if I zoom in too close ones on this oh we've got these ones I'm wondering what to do with those leaves just below I'm wondering whether to keep this colour going but I'm not sure that'll work I'm just checking what's a stalk and what's a leaf there we go that's that um, hmm. I think yeah we'll go for this one which is the leaf green it's just slightly darker and it will look a little bit different but will be fitting with this colour um, again I'm going to do darker at the bottom I did think maybe I could change it up and do it the other way but because they're all overlapping at the bottom it just seems to make sense to uh, have them darker at the bottom I 
Now, is that a leaf? Um, yeah, it is now. There we go. That'd be less brown bear for me to worry about trying to work out how to colour. <laughs> Um, I coloured a rabbit the other day and was rather pleased with how it came out. I wasn't at all sure that uh, I actually cheated them. I used somebody else's and copied there. So, uh, um, I think this bit on the back, I'm going to use May Green just because I really like it. Um, I'm not, I think I'm going to do the whole bunch the same just because um, we've sort of done little groups of colour, so I think it will work. So you can see I'm just putting more colour on the bottom of the leaf and then lightening it towards the tip of the leaf. all quite dark as well. I've seen people are starting to post pictures from here on um, Instagram and stuff which is lovely, on social media. People are getting their books. I know some of them were a bit delayed. I think Amazon had delayed delivery on some people's. I um, actually cancelled my order with Amazon and swapped to Waterstones instead because Waterstones had them in stock. I wanted to get on and do some videos for you. so easy to show. I'm just moving my uh, remote control as they're holding the page down. I've been colouring in um, the um, planner and also in an older copy of Enchanted Forest and the paper is just isn't quite the same. But uh, it's still okay. But this is just noticeably lovely. So these I'm trying to do a little bit darker near the stem, but we haven't got a lot of room to uh, do it. Now I'm going to um, do, oops, do the claw bits first. Now I'm assuming they're going to be quite dark. I'm going to take the dark sepia and do them really dark at the bottom, a bit lighter at the top, where it would be catching the light a little bit. could leave a little white bit, but I don't know if there would be much of a reflection of light. You see I'm procrastinating doing the main part. <laughs> what I've decided to do is I'm going to grab a colour and I'm going to go all over it and then I'm going to pick out where I think needs shading. So we'll start off with quite a pale colour. I think I'll do one of the sort of warmer browns. Yeah actually I might go for this one which is the brown ochre and just go over all of him just with little circles. I'm just trying to get an even colour to start with. Oh look I've missed that bit. Oh well we're just gonna have to do that bit after aren't we? How did I miss that? It's been nattering on. Not noticing. I think this is probably a little bit pale for a bear. But I wanted it to look a bit 
теплом. Seeing this bear, thinking about wandering in the forest and meeting a bear. It's quite funny. Reminds me of um, Johanna's live where she spoke about seeing the husky dog. I don't know if you saw it. And her and her daughter thought it was a wolf. Well, there was an article in our local paper um, yesterday, I think, where there was a animal print that they'd found in the um, local area in the Cotswolds. And they said they thought it looked like a puma. There's always talk of there being wild cats around here. I don't know if it happens in all um, slightly rural. When I don't live in a rural area, but in the county, um, if people live in slight, that if county's got a lot of rural areas, whether there's always talk of wild cats. I'm never sure. It, it seems a little odd. I know one of my friend said that her ex, he was walking along the canal path, which is just goes very, very close to our house, and he reckons he saw a black panther um, on the other side of the canal. And she told me this story along this little bit of the canal that's really creepy. It's quite, it's got factories backing onto it, and the factories have um, air conditioning units, which are on the canal side and they make a rumbling noise and apparently if there's a certain if there's a noise at a certain resonance it makes you feel freaked out and it does just that little bit always makes me feel really freaked out I always feel like there's someone following me and it's only for 10-20 meters so it's fine so I just always put a spurt on if I'm on my own I was walking with my friend and she tells me the story just at this bit. So now when I'm walking along that bit, ooh, it's a leaf. Not only do I um not only do I hear that noise and it freaked me out, I think about this flipping wild cat, sort of puma or whatever, leopard or whatever it was, black cat, and think, oh but of course I reckon it's probably someone's got an enormous um cat or dog and uh that's probably what it is. I'm only I'm colouring over the top. You notice there because that's really dark, and um, I'm colouring quite lightly, so I know it isn't going to smudge. But here, where the grain's lighter, I can't do that. So yeah, so there I always get freaked out at that point, and hurry. And I know there's artist studios and things along there. But uh, no. I've also seen the most amazing caterpillar just there. It was an elephant moth caterpillar, and it was just amazing. But uh, I was uh, when I spotted that I was with my parents and one of the children. I don't know which one. So uh, I wasn't freaked out then. I say it's only when I'm on my own. So ooh. Aren't we silly, eh? I think that nose needs to be black. I'm going over that bit of the ear. I will think about what I'm doing with it. Right. I realise it's much lighter here than there, so... I'll get another layer down. Just to even it over. I'm just going to do these little um, leaves. Um, I think I'm going to go for this colour, which is the juniper green. I thought I'd use the juniper green. I must have used something else and told you it was juniper green. Oh, I did. It was this one is juniper green, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. No, I don't want to use that. Um, I use this which is chrome oxide green instead and I just want to do it first so that I can focus on my shading 
and we need a darker brown. Of course we've used brown here as well which was probably a mistake. Never mind. You learn as you go, don't you? So I think I am going to grab my um, burnt umber and see what we can do to make this bear not look quite so orange. So I'm going to start at the bottom of this foot and just gently shade upwards. Now, you might see it's quite liney. That will be good. And this foot. That's the feet. Now I'm thinking usually the backs of the legs would be a bit darker as well. There's one. This one, hmm, I'm thinking it'll be darker that side. Let's do this one. It's be quite dark under there, wouldn't he? There we go. under the belly. Hmm. I wonder what these always look so friendly and cuddly. I wonder why people are scared of them. But having never met one, I assume they're enormous and they probably are quite scary. Um, now, yeah, let's go under here. Now, hmm, thinking that might be that, and we might now try and do a bit of a fur effect with the dark sepia. So, it's going to start here and just do some. Now this is really sharp, which I think is key. Now I find that when I do this, I get, after a while, I get, start get making my strokes too big, and then it can look a little old. So I, have to, I need to try and make sure. I also thinking carefully about the direction of the stroke. So I think it will change. And I can hear a strange noise. I don't know if it's my fridge or if it's I think it is. So I'm thinking they'll go in upward direction from the ear. Put a bit more in there. And then um, coming up from the nose and mouth, but up from the out from the bottom of the eye.
I'm concentrating and not speaking, I'm sorry. Now you've got this, um, moving towards where we've got all this detail, but I think it doesn't matter if your lines go over the edge of the flowers and things. As I think the fur would naturally work its way over the top of some of it. Now make sure your pencil stays sharp. This is where some people actually use sandpaper to sharpen their pencil. I think if you, this could be a good idea for this sort of little detail, but I don't have any in the house. I'm sure I've got some somewhere, so uh, I'm going to do this. It's so funny, I was listening to Johanna Basford the other day and she was talking about how she hung pictures on her wall. She said she's got really, she's just got plasterboard on her walls and you can't drill. Now my walls are exactly the same. And she said she was learning proper DIY to work out how to hang them properly. Because what she usually does is just uses a bit of Velcro. And my brain went, what a fantastic idea. Why am I bothering to try and drill the wall when I could be sticking all my pictures up with Velcro? And there she is trying to learn a more professional way of hanging her pictures. And there's me thinking, oh, Velcro, wow. But actually, what I tend to use picture hooks because then all you have to do is nail a little tack into the wall and I can manage that. But if you have to drill the wall, it's useless. It just, uh, I do use all the proper, um, there's some proper, um, what are they called? Oh, I don't know. Um, things that you use to, to um, put in plasterboard walls that sort of have, are supposed to grip it better but uh, I try and use those, but I just find they don't work. They still come out. I don't know what it is. So uh, I found picture hooks are brilliant. As I say, you just stick a tack in a picture hook, nail it in and off you go. And we've actually got quite a few considerable holes in our wall where we've tried to hang things and it's gone horribly wrong. And uh, they're covered over, some, most of them, with things. Don't look as bad. Now I'm not doing anything particularly technical, which is why I'm not talking to you about what I'm doing. Just tiny little lines. Now you might decide you don't think the fur goes this way. I'm wondering whether it will go downwards at this point on the body, but I don't know how to change the direction to make it look natural. So I'm just going across. But I think with the legs are gonna it's gonna have to go up and down, so i have to change the direction in a minute. I'll just do the tummy. And what I'll do is I'll start, because the foot goes across, but then it needs to curve up the leg. Like that. I would have thought, anyway. I've done a few little curvy ones, which hopefully help change in direction. Here we've got a cross and then it's going to sort of go up here. But where do we stop? And I guess that goes up there. We could use the flowers to help us hide this and change in direction. I like his face much better. I think we've got smaller lines there. I'm going to put in some smaller lines here where I think it looks like they're too big. As I said, I have this habit of going into longer lines because it sort of hurries you up a bit. But of course it doesn't look right. You also need to try and make sure you don't end and start all the lines in the same place, or you get like a stripe. 
which can look a bit strange too. But there, I'm going to finish with him there. I think he probably could have done with a darker colour underneath him to start with, but it's too late now to do that. But uh, I'm particularly happy with his face. I think he looks rather cute. We just need to do his nose, of course. I'm going to grab a black. This is just a normal black. I'm going to burnish it down quite hard so that it looks... Apparently burnishers are really good for noses. They make them look more shiny. I don't know. I think we need a dot of white. I'm going to use my um, jelly roll. This is a number 10. Ooh. There we go. There's the end of the... Uh, there's the bear done. So, uh, oh, inside the mouth. Mm. Maybe just the burnt umber in there. I don't know. I'm sort of a bit tentative to do it pink or make it look like a tongue. I think that might look a little odd. I think we'll leave it like that. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one and I hope you have a go at the bear and uh, enjoy doing him. Um, happy colouring. <laughs>